Pride Month and corporations are on a collision course, propelled by an increasingly angry conservative consumer base fueled by anti-LGBTQ plus disinformation. Outside of YouTube, I am a marketing expert, so I will try to use as much of my knowledge in this video. This is the perfect example of marketing and politics colliding. In recent years, corporations turned Pride Month into a tradition of sorts, rebranding their flagship products with rainbows as part of their consumer-facing brand strategy. On their own, these initiatives may appear trivial, but as more brands partake in this practice, it also helps raise greater awareness for Pride Month. I think Plusibology says it best. He argues that businesses have a role to play. Businesses do play a role in changing public opinion, and that even these shallow attempts at aligning themselves with the Pride movement have a positive effect that shouldn't go unnoticed. Pride is also an opportunity for brands to capitalize on yet another cultural event. The same way they capitalize on other seasonal rebranding like Halloween, Easter, Christmas, Canada Day, Valentine's Day, or the 4th of July. What's unique with Pride Month rebranding is the fact that it exists to celebrate the existence of a minority group that has been historically marginalized. By showing their support for Pride Month, brands also communicate their values. This is not new. Brands communicate their values all the time. Think of a brand like Dove. Throughout the years, they aligned the Dove brand with body positivity using visual campaigns like this one, or repackaging stunts like this. This is one of many examples of brands aligning the messaging for their products with the values of their consumers. But why do brands feel the need to communicate their values with consumers in the first place? Well. The answer lies in the numbers. To help us make sense of this, please welcome Noemi Michel. Last year, I coached her team at The Happening Marketing. We finished first in the strategy case study, and today, she's a marketing expert. Noemi, welcome to the channel. Thanks for having me. Can you help us understand why brands are prone to communicating their values these days? On the one hand, consumers are less loyal to brands than they were in previous years. Brands must find ways to compensate for that volatility. Leaning on brand values is one solution. 77% of consumers choose to buy from brands that share their values. This helps brands build trust and engage consumers. Thanks, Noemi. We'll see you in a bit. Like Noemi said, brands have an interest in communicating causes they support because consumers are looking to spend their money in a way that reflects their values. With that in mind, it's easy enough for brands like Sephora to support the LGBTQ community. I'm sure the queer community makes a good proportion of their consumer base. But what about brands that cater to a much, much wider audience? What happens to brands when the values of some consumers clash with other consumers? 2023 embodies that dilemma. This year, what seemed like a safe brand strategy for Pride Month turned into a nightmare for brands, their employees, and consumers. To better understand that dynamic, we need to understand the context surrounding the anti-LGBTQ plus panic on the right. Why is there a moral panic in the first place? I think it stems from the right-wing outrage machine. Conservatives literally hijacked the debate and redefined the meaning of Pride Month and the Pride flag for millions of their followers. Yeah, you know, it might seem like just a tasteless violation of flag etiquette here, but the message that the Biden administration is sending is pretty clear. This ideology runs America. It's the new state religion. And a lot of Americans see this and are offended by it, not because they oppose equal rights, not because they oppose, you know, love who you love. It's because they see this flag and they see the destruction of women's sports and women's private spaces, the indoctrination of their children, the politic politicization of the medical community. This is what happens. This rhetoric fueled anti-LGBTQ plus legislations. We've seen this in a previous video earlier this month, but it also makes it more difficult for brands to communicate their values during Pride Month. That's why this year's backlash is the perfect intersection of politics and consumerism. Earlier, we discussed how consumers want their values to be reflected in the brands they purchase. It's not only true for the left. It's true for everyone, and as consumers get more polarized along partisan lines, 
the situation complexifies for brands. Relevant to today's topic, here are the three pillars to the corporate pride backlash. First, over the last year, conservative media relentlessly spread disinformation about the LGBTQ plus community with the focus on the LGBTQ grooming children conspiracy theory. And this is why, because you have to wonder why it is that so many administrators and teachers are not only going along with this sort of ideological and sexual grooming, why, why exactly they are doing this sort of stuff. You have to wonder why they're so enthusiastic about it, because that's what's really amazing about all of this, is that we went from, we just want whatever we want in the privacy of our own bedroom, to we must teach your kids actively, because the institutions of society are bad, and they... They, they teach your kids bigotry and evil. And so we are going to ideologically groom an entire next generation of people who believe like we believe. And that means we have to grab them at the earliest possible age and indoctrinate them in our viewpoint as to sexual fluidity and sexual orientation and gender identity. This fueled outrage and anger toward our community. Second, conservative opinion makers usurped the true meaning of the pride flag, turning it into a hate symbol for many. Welcome back, you may have noticed it's Pride Month and it's pretty hard to ignore it. The rainbow flag has been hoisted over London's Regent Street in place of Union Jack and draped from the White House balcony in place of a Star Spangled Banner, which has sparked quite a backlash in the States. Have we gone rainbow crazy? Or is Pride Month more important than patriotism? Now listen, Pride Month is not a new thing. They've been celebrating Pride Month for many, many years, and most American conservatives had no issue with it until it became forceful, until it became the need for acknowledgement, the need for forced celebration, the need for forced validation. That's when you lost people. And then we took LGB and then we added LGBTQIA++++ and then we included men who dress up like women and mock women like influencer Dylan Mulvaney and then a lot of American conservatives just said listen we've had enough it's okay if you're proud of your sexuality but why do I have to be proud of your sexuality that's where you lost a lot of folks and we're starting All right. to finally well, stand firstly, up I'll say, say okay. enough trans enough. woman in turn radicalized consumers are angry over pride flags in stores. So much that corporations feared for the safety of their employees. We'll discuss this in greater details later in this video. Third, right-wing policymakers passed an unprecedented number of bigoted anti-LGBTQ plus laws for political gain, further marginalizing the queer community. A raft of anti-LGBTQ legislation in mostly Republican-led states now faces mounting legal challenges. 20 states have put into place bans or severe restrictions on transition-related medical care for minors, but measures in at least five of those states have now been permanently or temporarily blocked from taking effect. In short, they turned Pride Month into a political statement, something brands must now reckon with and choose a side. This dynamic metastasized earlier in the Pride Month cycle when Bud Light partnered with trans content creator Dylan Mulvaney. On a marketing standpoint, Bud Light's activation with Dylan Mulvaney was fairly normal. Brands do it all the time. For example, last year, Priyanka was plastered all over Toronto when she partnered with Vizzy. Another example is this social media activation that Torji Thor did for McDonald's. Oh, I am killing it with breakfast this morning. I'm heading to rehearsal. At the end of the day, these social media activations and brand partnerships at large are not uncommon. They happen all the time. I think the Bud Light incident highly influenced the conservative response to Pride Month this year. For one, it got conservatives a ton of attention online, from the media and in liberal circles. Bud Light's response to the drama and the apparent loss in market share also emboldened the right. And I believe the incident legitimized fears that other brands had surrounding Pride Month. I suspect many marketing managers scaled back their Pride Month initiatives as a result of the Bud Light backlash. But the backlash for corporations supporting Pride Month went further this year, 
In fact, there were real active threats of violence waged against employees as a result of these brands' corporate Pride Month strategy. Target has been taking heat on social media and in its stores over some of its LGBTQ merchandise. Now, just over a week from Pride Month in June, the company is removing certain items and making changes to its LGBTQ merchandise nationwide. Target released a statement that reads in part, Since introducing this year's collection, we've experienced threats impacting our team members' sense of safety and well-being while at work. Given these volatile circumstances, we are making adjustments to our plans, including removing items that have been at the center of the most significant confrontational behavior. Target did not specify which items it was removing, but the swimsuits labeled Tuck Friendly has garnered a lot of attention, with some on social media vowing to boycott the company over its sale of adult swimsuits for trans women who have not had gender-affirming operations. Target and other big-box stores have been expanding their LGBTQ displays to celebrate Pride Month for the better part of a decade. The backlash comes at a divisive moment for transgender issues. Gender-affirming care and participation in sports have been a topic of debate in states across the country. Obviously, corporations have a duty to keep their employees safe. It's so easy for someone sitting at Target's headquarters in the marketing department to say, heck, we're pushing through with Pride Month. But it's another story when you're a floor employee receiving death threats. Target's decision to pull some of their Pride merchandise following anti-LGBTQ plus backlash is being criticized as another example of a corporation bowing to conservative pressure and demonstrating selective pride. After criticism over their LGBTQ plus Pride collection led to complaints, vandalism, and even bomb threats, Target removed certain items due to concerns for staff safety and well-being, leading some to accuse the retailer of caving in to right-wing threats. The store had been selling tuck-friendly swimsuits for adults. However, social media users claimed that the swimsuits were marketed at children, few Fueling typically hateful anti-LGBTQ plus claims that Target is grooming children. And in the end, it's a lose-lose situation. Imagine you're a manager at Target. Conservatives are angry and threaten your employees with violence over a rainbow flag. So what do you do? You must keep your employees safe. So you remove the flags, right? We cannot blame corporations for seeking to shelter their employees from actual threats of violence. Regardless of the motive, it creates a complex situation for brands to navigate because it creates more backlash, this time from the LGBTQ community and allies. Removing the flags may help protect employees from threats of violence, but from a marketing and communications perspective, it sends a contradicting message. When Starbucks removed pride flags after years of communicating their values of inclusion toward the LGBTQ community, it sends the opposite message. So we can establish the content. Oh, well, you can't write my drink. I literally only came here because of that support, and I'm not going to drink it. I go to Dunkin'. I only came here to support that just for $11. You know, Jeff, I'm sorry. 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 I'
so far in this video, we address the consumer-facing challenges that Pride Month now represents for brands. But this tricky situation also affects corporations on another level, their employer brand. To help us make sense of it all, we're bringing back Noemi. Can you help us understand what an employer brand is? Employer brands market the company as an employer to job seekers. Employer brands are becoming increasingly important to corporations because the need to hire and retain employees is ultra relevant in this job market. Noemi, what are some attributes of an employer brand? In other words, what do brands must communicate when it comes to their identity as an employer? Today, money alone is not enough to attract talented prospects. According to Harvard Business Review, more than 9 out of 10 employees are willing to sacrifice a part of their lifetime earnings for a sense of purpose at work. The undercover recruiter has identified 16 key factors. We will put all 16 on the screen, but here are the most relevant ones. By understanding these factors, brands build a strong employer brand to attract and retain employees. Once again, Noemi, thanks for your help. With that in mind, it's clear how this year's Pride Month puzzle complexifies the situation for brands, both for their consumer brand and their employer brand. If a corporation previously supported Pride, then removed their Pride flags from their stores, it raises legitimate questions as to the inclusivity of the corporation as an employer, and therefore, it may impact their recruiting and retention process. It is relevant to talk about the employer brand in this video because the right is also coming for diversity and inclusion measures in the corporate world. Now, every time you hear some educator or corporate flack reference their important efforts to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion, one word should come to mind. Scam. Now, this grouping of seemingly innocuous terms has become its own weapon against objective merit and excellence across the American landscape. And it's wrapped up with the anti-racism and allyship movements. It's a bunch of corrosive claptrap, you know it, I know it. But it's not just found in our educational institutions, it's now embedded itself into all aspects of corporate life with training videos and seminars. But wait, there's more. We must also take into account that corporations do more than just change their logos for Pride. They help promote LGBTQ plus causes internally with special programs. Corporations can also pledge funds to help outside organizations. This push is driven by employees, by the way. Although not all corporations put their money where their mouth is, some do, and we must continue demanding their involvement. The bottom line is this, conservatives politicize Pride Month for political gain, and brands are just collateral damage. On the consumer-facing side, corporations communicate their values because consumers seek brands that align with their own values. As consumers become more and more polarized over LGBTQ plus rights and other rights, brands will be forced to take a side. It's a tricky situation. On the employer-facing side, corporations must uphold these same values to recruit and retain employees in an extremely competitive job market. But corporations must also shield their employees from real threats of violence. It's a tricky situation. In addition, corporations fund and launch programs to support the LGBTQ community and their queer employees. If corporate contributions come under attack by the right, the way they attack diversity and inclusion measures, it could turn into a tricky situation. So with that in mind, can we really give up on corporations? I don't think we can. As much as people may hate how brands pander to the LGBTQ community during Pride Month, the prospect of corporations turning their backs on us to appease a radicalized right-wing consumer base is not a good thing for our community. Or any minority group as a matter of fact. If the right is coming for Pride Month in June, they could come for Black History Month in February, and so on. The LGBTQ community may be tired of corporate takeover at the parade and at the grocery store. I get it. But pragmatically, corporations are more than just entities selling consumer goods. They're employers and they have a role to play in promoting equality. 
They also have dollars to help fund nonprofits and internal programs. So we must continue demanding more from corporations. We cannot be complacent. Because in the end, corporations are too embedded in the social fabric of our societies. As usual, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you liked the video, like the video. You might also like this one. And I want to say a special thank you to Noemi for joining us in this video. All her links will be in the description below. And I'll see you very soon. Bye!